South Africa is at the highest inflation level in five years. But what does it mean for you as the average South African? Hi, I'm Yolanda and welcome to the Wealth Nation podcast. On this podcast, I give you easy, actionable tips, content and strategies that you can use to manage money well, live abundantly and build generational wealth. So today we're talking about inflation, the effect of inflation on us, the average South African consumer and what we can do to try and combat all of these high numbers. And South Africa is not the only ones that are struggling with high inflation. It's, it's happening all around the world. We are finding that food, food, fuel, electricity, basic things that make up our lifestyles, the prices of everything is going up really, really quickly. In South Africa, the consumer price inflation is currently at 5.9%, and it hasn't really been this high since 2017. And as bad as it is, oh, we don't have it as bad as the Americans and the British because their inflation numbers are just crazy high. Americans are paying about 8.5% more for goods than they did uh, from a year ago. And the British around 6.2%. But what is inflation? Well, we can describe inflation as changes in prices. And it's the price of everything from foods to drinks, our clothing, transport, energy. All of, all of these pricing is affected by inflation. But there's two kinds of inflation. The first one is producer price inflation. And we don't often hear about this one on the news. But what this basically means is the price that producers pay for their raw materials before they process it to make it usable for us as the end user. Okay, That's one level of inflation. And then we have consumer the consumer price index, and that's what, what we are paying for the finished product after it has been processed. So when you see a report or hear of a report that says inflation is at 5% year on year, it basically means that in general, you're paying 5% more for the goods and services than you were last year this time. But what is the cause of inflation? And again, we find all the, the technical guys telling us there are two main causes where there's a, a cost push that's driving off inflation or demand pull. And demand pull is basically demand for goods and services. When the demand is high, the price will become high. And we don't really have this problem in South Africa because our unemployment is at such high levels uh, a very conservative figure would be at around 35%. But in reality, we know that the real rate of unemployment is sitting at around 50% or so. Then we have the cost push type of uh, cause of inflation. And this basically means that the cost of production, the cost of raw materials is driving prices up and causing inflation. And now producers, because they're paying more for goods and services, uh, they need to pass on those costs to the consumer. And in South Africa, we have uh, the walking disaster. Eskim is, is a big contributor of inflation. And if a lot of South Africans really understood inflation and really understood the role in the economy and how it affects your everyday life, this is something that you need to go and protest about. Not that I'm calling for any protests or anything like that, right? But if folks really understood it, you would be out on the streets demanding change. So when we find that inflation drives our prices higher than the, the income that we currently have, this is when trouble starts. And we see it now. I mean, especially in the mines, people are demanding more. And rightly so. I mean, we all want to, to earn a living wage. We see the government workers also in negotiations as well. And again, if they really understood it, they wouldn't be asking for more money, but they would be asking for action to be taken to combat inflation. But obviously, more money is always far more appealing than addressing the root cause in South Africa. Some of the negative effects of inflation is uh, the pensioners, people that are living on pension are very, uh, they hit really hard, mainly because people in the pension space, when they invest their pension money, they usually like to play it safe. And the safe bits are interest-bearing investments because you know you're getting a guaranteed income. You're not taking much risk there. So when inflation hits hard, the pensioners get it the most because, because that money is, is devaluing. Their 
income is fixed and that money is devaluing so fast. It also destroys the value of cash. It's kind of like hot potato. You don't want to be caught with the potato. You don't want to be uh, caught with cash on your hand because that cash is just losing its value. And remember, money is a store of value. All right. So we got to put that store of value in a place that shields from inflation. And because this cash is losing value, you can't save it. it it's, it's not worth saving. And we spoke about the wage negotiations. That's one of the biggest uh, effects of high inflation is people demanding more. It increases the uh, cost of borrowing. This week, we will hear how much the Reserve Bank is increasing the rate of interest. I'm expecting 50 basis pounds or so. It's quite a, quite a big jump from where we were. But this is what the Reserve Bank is going to do to try and combat inflation. It also reduces the value of currency against other currencies. We're in this basket now. I think we're sitting at around 16 rand to the dollar, which is crazy. That means next month we're going to we're going to find we're going to be paying a lot more for fuel. It's probably it's really high right now. But once the minister removes that um, that buffer that he had created for April and May on the fuel levy, compounded with the devaluing of the rand, next month is going to be a horrid month for inflation. And in the extreme cases when in inflation just cannot be controlled by monetary policy in the country, people just abandon the currency altogether and switch over to another currency. And we see our neighbors in Zimbabwe, they had to do that about a decade or so where they dumped the Zimbabwean dollar and adopted the use of the US dollar. A couple of other terms that usually are associated with inflation is something called deflation. And we experienced this early on in a lockdown, like in March last year. Sorry, it seems like last year, but in March uh, 2020, we experienced a point of deflation because there was no demand for goods. And we saw petrol price plummet because when we were on lockdown, we didn't need fuel in our cars because we were not allowed to go anywhere. And that lack of demand drove down the price of uh, fuel. Okay, And it's not healthy for us to have uh, deflation. Another uh, term that comes about when you hear or speak about inflation is stagflation. And this is basically when prices are so high or are rising very, very rapidly. But at the same time, economic growth is super weak or even falling. And for us, it seems like as a nation, we've been in a period of stagnation for more than a decade or so. But it can get a lot worse than where we are now, as bad as things are now. So what can you do as an investor to limit the harm that inflation is bringing upon your portfolios, upon your retirement? You got you to gotta build up this inflationary shield. So the first thing you got to do is really take a deep dive into your portfolios. What are you investing in? And typically around this time of high inflation, companies... Um, tend to hold value better than, than others, certain kind of companies. And you'll find that companies that offer essential services, essential products, um, tend to hold better value than, let's say, the leisure sector, for example. Because people are not buying the luxuries anymore. They're buying the basics because that's where they're at. Diversification is another key thing for you to do um, during times of high inflation. Especially if you are heavily focused on bonds and cash. Um, you could easily switch out into commodities like gold or, or even oil, depending on the investment company that you're in. And try and get exposure on, on uh, the commodities via ETFs within your portfolio. So not really withdrawing because remember, cash, you don't want this hot potato of cash in your hands, but you want to shield from this inflation. And gold is always that safe haven. And we find because there's such a mass movement to commodities and, and gold and silver specifically, this will drive prices. Demand will drive prices for, for these commodities higher as well. And we've been seeing that um, in the last three months or so where gold prices they haven't really uh, dropped or increased at a massive rate but with so many countries in this in this place of inflation or stagflation 
most of the investors, the investment houses are flocking towards the safe havens. And gold has always been, since the beginning of time, it's been a store of wealth. It's been a good store of wealth and it's been seen as a safe haven. All right, so those are my two points for you. Uh, please go and understand what it means, or what inflation means and how you can shield from it. We did a whole series last year on the Wealth Nation podcast. Uh, go back and listen to those episodes on inflation. Gave you tons of tips there. It all applies here all over again. But guys, just don't spend unnecessarily. Don't get into consumer debt. If you have to buy anything, try and, try and do it cash. And um, look at your portfolios. So book an appointment online at solomonwealth.co.za. Click the Get Started button and we can chat one-on-one. -on -one. Review those portfolios. Make sure you're not exposed unnecessarily and and try and shield uh, your investments from the these tough times that we're going to be facing and we, we see also that petrol is going to be a big driver of, of inflation as i explained that that tax relief from the fuel levies are uh, will go away at the end of the month and our weak currency will drive up a massive petrol price increase next month energy <laughs> Okay, we are in for a long, hard winter with Eskom. All right, there's like, it's literally no light at the end of this Eskom uh, tunnel. And that's going to drive up prices because it's going to impact manufacturing. So be wise with your funds, pay down debt wherever you can, close up those store cards, those personal loans. Be wise with your spending. All right, try and shield wherever you can. Right, so that's it for this episode of the Wealth Nation podcast. I'll catch you next week.